Hello, this is Biology 101, and in this video, we'll be talking about enzymes. Enzymes are proteins which function as biological catalysts, meaning that they are agents which speed up chemical reactions without being consumed. Enzymes have specific areas on them called active sites, which bind to what we refer to as the substrate, forming what we call the enzyme-substrate complex. Each active site caters to the specific shape of the substrate. In order to create a stronger connection between the active site and the substrate, when the two bind together, the binding changes both of their shapes to match each other more perfectly, creating what we call an induced fit. Now, the initial energy needed to start a reaction is what we call the activation energy. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions by lowering this energy needed for reactants to come together and react through a process known as catalysis. The induced fit between the active site and the substrate creates the optimal orientation and the microenvironment for catalysis to occur effectively. While enzymes may do a great job at improving the efficiency of chemical reactions, Sometimes, they need to be assisted by other molecules in order to function. For instance, cofactors, or inorganic molecules, and coenzymes, or organic molecules, serve as helpers which bind to and activate enzymes, allowing them to work properly. Now, while enzymes may have helpers such as cofactors and coenzymes which improve their function and activity, they also have inhibitors which limit their capabilities. Enzymes are inhibited in various ways. Irreversible inhibition occurs when an inhibitor irreversibly inactivates an enzyme by covalently bonding to groups such as amino groups on the active site. On the other hand, reversible inhibitors understandably inactivate enzymes through non-covalent reversible interactions. Reversible inhibitors are divided into two categories, which we'll be talking about in this video. This includes competitive inhibitors, which bind to the active site, competing against the substrate, and non-competitive or allosteric inhibitors, which bind to another part of the enzyme, known as the allosteric site, causing the enzyme to change shape, thus making the active site less effective. Now it's important to note that allosteric binding can both inhibit and amplify an enzyme's activity, depending primarily on how the enzyme's protein's shape is altered. Finally, feedback inhibition occurs when the end products bind to the initial enzymes after reaching a critical concentration, thus inhibiting their function. Now even if inhibitors, cofactors, and coenzymes did not exist, the activity of enzymes is still impacted significantly by the various environmental factors. Each enzyme has an optimal temperature and pH which maximizes its function. However, if the conditions are changed, this can cause the 3D protein structure of the enzyme to change due to abnormal levels in temperature and pH, causing it to become denatured and dysfunctional. So what did we learn in this video? First, we learned that enzymes are proteins which function as biological catalysts, meaning that they speed up chemical reactions without being consumed. We also learned that enzymes have specific areas called active sites, which bind to substrates, forming the enzyme-substrate complex. Next, we learned that enzymes speed up chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy needed for these processes to occur. We also learned about the various cofactors, coenzymes, and inhibitors, which promote and inhibit an enzyme's activity. Finally, we learned about how the conditions that an enzyme is subjected to can affect its functionality, 